We heard from Amit there about uh, some of the issues of not having visibility uh, into all of the parts of your network and to all of the threats. Uh, there's another realm where we think uh, a lot of people have lost visibility, and that's to all of the data that your staff are storing. Uh, we find that less and less of this stuff is stored in the data center. My background, I was an IT director for a global investment bank uh, here in London, uh, Nomura, Japan's largest investment bank, and uh, spent a lot of years building data centers and protecting the information that we held in those data centers. Uh, perimeter security, uh, protection in another sense, uh, high availability, business continuity, keeping everything running so people could work. And protection in a third sense around data governance, deciding you know, who could see what when they joined us, depending on their roles, and then uh, retaining our access to that intellectual property after staff had left. Well, there's a problem now, and the problem, uh, as due to the advent of consumerization of IT, due to uh, the plethora of devices that people can use without asking you, and the plethora of cloud services that people can use without asking you, uh, something like half of the data that was stored in your data center isn't anymore. So we think that we need to do something about that, and we think it relates to endpoint uh, data protection. So we're Code42. We solved this problem for 36,000 businesses globally. I think I'm standing in front of it, so I'll go over here. Um, and uh, uh, that, that's for all sorts of sizes of businesses, large and small, around the world. Our best-known product is CrashPlan, which is uh, entirely uh, focused on this issue. So um, data, we think, is on the edge. It's on the edge of the network increasingly. Uh, I mentioned that um, uh, you know, something like 50%, I think this is a Gartner stat, says by 2017, 50% uh, of unstructured data is no longer in the data center uh, where we used to protect it, where we used to sort of just building the walls higher and higher. Uh, putting our fingers in the holes in the dike to try and stop people moving stuff in and out if we don't like it. Well, frankly, uh, as people have become more mobile, thanks to the consumerization of, ID, of IT, devices like these, devices that you might buy for them or they might buy for themselves, uh, frankly, people will ignore your network, ignore your firewalls. Uh, there is no firewall when we're traveling around. They'll tether to their iPhones, they'll connect to Starbucks, and they'll do what the hell they like. Uh, in fact, they'll use all sorts of uh, applications and cloud services as well, and they'll, just, they'll do this not because they're malicious, they'll do this because they just want to get their jobs done. Uh, and of course, there's a conflict here between uh, our responsibility to protect that data, uh, to be able to uh, forensically look back at who's had what when to protect their intellectual property, uh, and our inability anymore to, to access and see all of this uh, uh, information. Uh, so bring your own device, bring your own cloud, this plethora of devices, this uh, uh, beginnings that we see now of mobile content creation as well, uh, leaves IT in a bit, of a bit of a tough spot. You know, we have to do lots of things in IT. Uh, amongst those things uh, includes protecting that information uh, and, and also keeping that stuff always available. And when, you know, a lot of your key people are walking around with a, a device which is a single point of failure, uh, that can be a challenge. Uh, a lot of the points on this slide are not even things you'd mention at a dinner party anymore. It's, it's, it's all pretty well known. Um, more than half of workers use three or more devices every day. Uh, there's billions of tablets out there. There's 60% uh, of workers have used a personal device for work. Uh, and and we, we think that it's not surprising. There's, there's a huge opportunity here, uh, not only for, uh, for greater efficiency, sweating our human assets and getting people to do more work, but frankly, the pull comes from our staff. It's much more convenient, it's, much, it's very attractive to have this flexibility to be able to drop the kids off after school, go for a run, then finish your work. So, so people don't want to do what you've often forced them to do through policy, uh, through rules and regulations. Copy your stuff over the VPN, put it in our filers, make sure we can protect it. Frankly, people have just got an interest in getting on with their own lives and they don't really care about the IT problem set. Uh, the vast majority of applications uh, in use in enterprises are not uh, authorised by, by IT. How could you possibly uh, authorise all of those things? There's just too many. I was speaking at the Security Congress uh, conference recently. Uh, one fellow made a very good point. He says that there are all these threat agents where individual staff, they, they, they have names like, like Dropbox or, 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 uh, or Google Drive, uh, where staff sign click wrap uh, licence agreements which give them permission to take information out of your network. Now, there's, you can argue whether the staff have the right to do it, but you know, it's what happens, right? People do it. Uh, most staff will admit to storing and sharing work on, of corporate documents on their own personal devices as well. So I think that we can't really kid ourselves for much longer that this doesn't happen, that we can keep everything in our walled garden uh, and protect it. 
Uh, but I think that we do have a responsibility to somehow uh, keep people working, keep that information uh, highly available, and to protect that information, to protect the corporate uh, uh, information assets that we have out there. So how will you protect those information assets that are on the edge of your network? This world outside the data centre is a very different world to the one where we've got everything pinned down and controlled. Uh, we've made it over the years easy to manage and easy to protect because we've invested a lot over the last 30, 40 years uh, in people and process and software and hardware to do all those things for us. But outside the data centre, um, where IT is still accountable for uh, information, we find a very different world. We find all sorts of uh, devices in, in use. We find various roles. You know, you've got your C-level people who, uh, even though you might tell them that there's a particular way you'd like them to do it, will just shout at their assistant until they have the information they need on their iPad to show their investors at lunchtime. Uh, you've got people who um, work on planes and trains and who are not connecting to your network. So how will you gain control and visibility, regain control and visibility of all that information? When I was building data centres back in the 90s, uh, at the start there, we had green screens. I knew where all the information was. It was in the storage that I'd built. And the green screens weren't very smart and um, migration was easy. I just plugged in a different one and, and off we went. The stuff was still there. Then we saw smarter and smarter devices come along. Frankly, the things that we put in people's briefcases now that they carry around, whether they get them from us or they buy them themselves, are far more powerful compute-wise than most of what we give them in the data centre. And on top of that, we actually ship more storage into uh, desktop and laptop devices now than we do into data centres. So that's where the information is. So I'm going to share with you now um, our view as to uh, one way that you can uh, deal with this. And you can deal with it pretty cheaply. Uh, the, the cost of this stuff is the cost of a cappuccino per user per week uh, sold as software as a service. So we see here uh, some uh, desktop devices, laptop devices. That's pretty much the place where people create information. Um, and we see the sort of things where people want to access that information uh, from mobile devices, uh, from smartphones and iPads and Android devices and uh, all the rest of it. And what we want to be able to do is somehow create a central repository which represents everything that is or has been on those devices. We want to do it for a couple of different reasons. Some of those reasons are to do with the information workers and how they go about their jobs. And some of those reasons are to do with IT and security. Uh, where we start is with something really boring that no one cares about. Endpoint data protection is essentially uh, a form of backup. So we've got some clever stuff. I won't bore you with it now. You can come and see the guys and they'll give you a presentation on it, which keeps a track of every change that's happened on the client. We compress the, the hell out of it, deduplicate it, but most importantly, we encrypt it before it leaves the device and we don't encrypt it with keys that we own. What happens with uh, most uh, cloud-based or, or, or even private cloud-based services uh, is that the data gets transmitted over SSL through a secure tunnel and is encrypted when it gets to Google or Microsoft or whoever is doing that job for you. We think it's important that that should be encrypted before it leaves the device and not by us, but by, by you. So we provide uh, technology which integrates behind your firewalls, integrates with your directories, your LDAP, your AD, your single sign-on, your two-factor authentication, etc. But most importantly, it also generates uh, symmetric encryption keys which we distribute to these devices. And so the data that leaves there is not only shrunk down, uh, it, it's encrypted, but not by us. This means that uh, we're not uh, uh, caught in the trap of the conflict between European data protection regulations and the USA Patriot Act, for example. So the reason we do all this is so that these people can get that experience that they expect as consumers. They don't want to ask IT for help when they've lost a file or need to, re need to replace their laptop. Uh, or whatever. They just want, they want a self-service experience, push a button, all the stuff comes back. They also don't want to ask you for help or permission, frankly, when they want to access stuff on their mobile drives, their, their smartphones, their iPads. Well, we provide apps that mean that uh, whether we've provided this to you as a public cloud or a managed private cloud service, uh, that they can access that stuff, but using your, their corporate credentials, using uh, the identity and data governance regime that, that you've established, which we integrate with. Once we've done that, once we've got this repository going, a lot of routine IT tasks that were frankly straightforward when we had green screens and all the data in the filers now become easy again. Uh, things like uh, device migration. If you've got a thousand laptops, a thousand desktops in an environment, you replace about 25% of them a year. Uh, that experience can go from you know, big pain in the bum piling desks on the high, uh, high up on the, on the uh, piling laptops, I should say, high up on the tables uh, for people to copy across. Uh, when there's time, 
uh, to frankly, here's your new machine, push this button, there's your stuff. Just like when you get a new iPad, you sort of don't worry about the mechanics of getting back your, uh, um, your music and your photos of your kids and your contacts. Um, well, Apple asked us for something that does that, but in their corporate environments. That's one of the reasons that Apple is a, a global customer of ours, for example, because you want that experience, but you don't want it with your consumer identity, which is what iCloud does. You want it with your corporate identity so that we can still govern access to information. Apple said to us, look, one of the challenges we have is sometimes our staff leave us and some of them go work at Samsung. And then they'll claim that they invented something over there when we think they maybe invented it over here. So we would like to be able to uh, tackle e-discovery and legal hold and understand who had what when even after they've left us and without having to go and knock on doors. Uh, that's why people like, for example, Netflix use this, Roche Pharmaceuticals use this, because they want to be able to show when intellectual property has gone somewhere else that maybe uh, it started with them. So that's what we do. We do it with a couple of products, Crash Plan and Share Plan, which is a very um, uh, similar product to the likes of Dropbox, but runs on this same platform uh, that is inter integrated with your corporate security domain. That means that we can offer a much more secure alternative around file sync and share. Uh, that's the generic name for you know, Dropbox and uh, Google Drive and all that sort of stuff, uh, as well as keeping track of all the intellectual property that's on your machines. Uh, our customers deploy this uh, either as managed private cloud, we provide appliances, uh, which means that you can uh, uh, operate it within uh, your firewalls. It looks still like to your punters, to your staff, uh, like a public cloud service. It works in the same way and it's still charged as software as a service. Um, but uh, actually a lot of people also use it as, as an entirely public cloud solution, comfortable in the fact that uh, third parties such as the US National Security Agency can't decrypt that stuff. So just to wrap up now, what we, what we sell is stuff that goes in racks, the stuff to manage it. Um, you know, that could be our racks or your racks, we don't really care. All the apps that go in the app stores so that people can securely access all that information and yet ensure that it remains within your purview. We want you to have visibility and control uh, on all that information. That's why people like, uh, like Burberry, for example, here in London, Ogilvy and my other, uh, and others uh, do it in that way, just trying to click there. So there you go. So thank you very much for, um, for listening. Um, I hope you found that interesting and uh, the guys uh, can show you more on our stand. Thank you very much.